With the advent of subscription services in the gaming industry, there are a handful of options to choose from, three major ones in particular. All of them offer a subscription, bringing in a boatload of free games with additions over time as the service goes on. But not all subscription services are created equal. Some are better than others, while others satisfy an entirely different niche. With new players slowly getting into the gaming subscription scene such as Netflix Gaming and Apple Arcade, it can be hard to figure out where to spend your hard-earned money. Among these services, the major ones to look out for are Microsoft's Game Pass, Sony's PlayStation Plus, Nintendo Switch Online, and Apple Arcade. But which of these services are actually worth your money, and which ones can you live without? It also has to be mentioned that services change over time, especially in an industry as rife with innovation as this one. As such, changes that are both better or worse take place all the time. Keep watching to find out more. Microsoft Game Pass Easily the face of game subscription services, Game Pass burst into the scene back in 2017 and rolled out with over 100 games to play. Since then, the service has exploded in popularity with millions of subscribers. As far as quantity goes, Game Pass has a really strong lineup of over 300 games. Games which range from small indie titles to big AAA releases such as Bandai Namco's Scarlet Nexus, Sega's Yakuza Like a Dragon, and Square Enix's Guardians of the Galaxy. The service costs $9.99 per month for PC and Xbox Series X and S for the standard subscription and can be bought for either PC or console individually. The standard subscription includes access to the entire Game Pass catalog, day one first party releases, access to all new and upcoming games in the service, and special member discounts and deals. Alternatively, an ultimate subscription can be bought for $14.99, which includes xCloud support, exclusive deals, and in-game content for certain games. Keep in mind, there are some rumors that a price increase for Game Pass might be coming in the future, but as of now, that simply hasn't happened yet. Game Pass has a very respectable lineup of games, with a number bordering over 300 and also including EA's EA Play service, the choices are almost endless. This can make it somewhat difficult to pick out what games to start with. Well, viewer, in case you don't know what to start with, here are a few recommendations from yours truly. One of the biggest advantages of Game Pass is its day one access to many new first party titles. This means that game releases such as Redfall, High on Life, and many other upcoming games will be available day one on Game Pass. If you're eager to try out new games and play them as soon as they're available, then Game Pass is an easy bet for your choice of subscription. But on the other hand, one of the main caveats of Game Pass, at least on PC, is that it's not available on Steam, meaning that players will have to deal with the not-so-good Windows Store for downloads. And the xCloud support, while good, isn't really optimal for playing games unless you have a very high-speed internet connection. PlayStation Plus Following Game Pass's success and explosion into popularity, Sony followed suit this year with PlayStation Plus and its various subscription tiers. Similar to Game Pass, PS Plus has a very respectable lineup of games, including almost every major first-party Sony PS4 exclusive. In its most basic tier, titled PS Plus Essentials, you can play some of the best games on the PS4 with even the cheapest subscriptions such as Bloodborne, The Last Guardian, Infamous Second Son, Persona 5, and so much more. The Essential tier, which is the most basic, offers the usual monthly lineup of games that Sony always does, plus the PS Plus collection, cloud storage, and online multiplayer functionality. Essential costs $9.99 per month and $59.99 for a year. The second tier, called Extra, gives you everything from the Essential category, as well as access to Sony's game catalog and Ubisoft Plus classics. The highlight here is easily the game catalog, offering players access to a ton of games, including various PS5 exclusives such as Returnal, Demon's Souls Remake, and Ratchet and & Clank Rift Apart. It also includes various other third-party titles such as Dragon Quest XI-S, Echoes of an Elusive Definitive Edition, which is a title so long that I'll just end the examples here. 
Extra costs $14.99 per month and $99.99 for a full year. The final tier called Premium once again gives you everything from the previous two categories and adds cloud streaming and game trials on top of that. Alongside those two, its supposed biggest feature is the Classics catalog, letting you play PS1, PS2, PSP, and PS3 games on your PS5. Premium costs $17.99 per month and $119.99 for a year. Out of all three, Premium feels more like an expensive novelty. This is because the Classics catalog doesn't really live up to other alternatives such as backwards compatibility, nor does it offer a particularly interesting set of games. We'll go into this a bit more once we talk about the negatives. And from here, to make things simple, I'm going to assume that you're going to be buying either extra or above. Just like on Game Pass, there are a bunch of games we recommend keeping an eye out for, so go ahead and check out this list. As far as the pros go, the biggest advantage of getting PlayStation Plus is access to the vast library of PS5 and PS4 exclusives. This is especially useful if you've recently bought a PS5 and want a few options right out of the gate. Pop an extra sub and then you're good to go as far as games are concerned for basically the next few months. Another great idea is the Classics Catalog. While Sony has been not particularly great with game preservation, the Classics Catalog is still a fantastic idea to keep these PlayStation Classics preserved for a newer generation. And this is where we get into the bad. Remember when I mentioned the Classics Catalog is a great idea? That's because it's just that. A great idea, at least for now. While it's great that you can play the old Ratchet & Clank, Sly Cooper, and God of War games on your PS5, what sucks about it is the lack of other major PS2 titles. Come on, Sony, where's Metal Gear Solid? Where's y Yakuza 1 and 2? Where's Silent Hill? This, coupled with the fact that it costs a whole $20 more than the extra subscription, makes the $120 asking price a very tough pill to swallow. Another major caveat is the price point. While Game Pass costs $59.99 for a year, PS Plus Extra costs a whopping $99.99 for almost the same, if not less, content. Nintendo Switch Online, another follower to the success of Game Pass, although in a much different manner. Nintendo Switch Online isn't what you could call a Netflix for games like Game Pass or PS Plus Extra. Instead, it functions more like PS Plus Essential with its bonus content mostly relegated to N64 and SNES and NES titles that can be played via virtual console on the Switch. Due to this, Nintendo Switch Online is also way cheaper than other services, with the base subscription costing $19.99 for a full year, while the expansion pack is $49.99. At a score, Nintendo Switch Online offers Nintendo's library of playable SNES and NES games, cloud saves, online play, and exclusive deals. The expansion pack, however, adds support for Nintendo 64 and Sega Genesis, as well as actual expansion packs for Mario Kart 8, Animal Crossing, and Splatoon 3. Considering all the games here are from the NES, the Super Nintendo, or the Nintendo 64 era, this list is probably going to look a lot different compared to the ones you've been seeing above, but here we go. As far as pros go, the biggest pro of Nintendo Switch Online is that it's cheap, and at $20 a year, you can experience some of the most beloved game classics of all time. Whether you're a longtime Nintendo fan or a newcomer, this is just good preservation from a company that doesn't always nail the bar with it. I'm just gonna brush this Super Mario 3D All-Stars under the rug here. But as far as the cons go, the aforementioned preservation being good, especially at its price, it has to be mentioned that this isn't particularly the perfect way to play these games. Whether it be bugs, visual glitches, or frame rate issues, the quality of these games on the Switch doesn't live up to what you could get with proper emulation or hell, even the original hardware. If you're deep into mobile gaming and happen to have iOS, then I guess Apple Arcade could be a good subscription option, I guess? You can play classic mobile games such as Jetpack Joyride 2, Fruit Ninja, What the Golf, and a bunch more. At least there's variety, as the service itself states, 
every Apple Arcade game is handpicked to bring together an incredible variety of games for all playstyles and generations. Types of games include puzzle, strategy, adventure, simulation, board, card, sports, and more. Damn, that's a lot. Apple Arcade offers a free one-month trial, after which you can subscribe to it. $4.99 a month and $49.99 if you apply for the yearly subscription. And as usual, here's a list of some of the good games that we could find for Apple Arcade. One of the major pros of Apple Arcade is that there's very little overlap between games. A lot of the games on this service are games that you'll only exclusively find on Apple Arcade. Some of these include World of Demons by Platinum Games, yes, the Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising guys, and Fantasian made by ex Quaresoft developers and led by Hironobu Sakaguchi. And yes, that's the same Hironobu Sakaguchi that produced and directed some of the best games in the Final Fantasy franchise. As previously mentioned, this service is exclusive for iOS users. As such, playing games on a touchscreen isn't usually that satisfying without the tactile feel of a controller. This is more so a problem for those who aren't particularly used to playing games on a phone. The other major flaw is the price point. $49.99 for a bunch of mobile games, quality aside, might be a little on the extreme side. So, considering Game Pass itself costs only $10, that's a lot. So which is the winner? After going through all the services, it's apparent that all of them offer a unique novelty for different kinds of players. If you're invested in Nintendo IPs, Nintendo Switch Online is great. If you have a PS5 and want to play some of the best exclusives currently available on the PS5, then PS Plus Extra is incredible, even if it is a tad expensive. If you enjoy mobile gaming a lot, then Apple Arcade would be an easy pick for you. However, there is one clear winner here in this entire situation, and that is Game Pass. Until now, Game Pass has remained the embodiment of the idea of Netflix for video games, and none of its competitors have managed to live up to that mark. It's a great deal not only for anyone getting into games, but also for people who can only afford to buy so many games at any given time. PS Plus Extra ends up as the runner-up here. While it's really good, its lack of first-party titles on day one and expensive price point end up holding it back ultimately. So there we have it, Game Pass, probably the best subscription service currently available, probably the best bang for your buck, and the most games that you can play. Do you agree with us? Let us know in the comments if we missed anything, and thank you for watching.